Welcome to the Author Roundup. This special segment of the Book Connection Show features up-and-coming indie authors who sit down with us and talk about their recently released books. Join us as we chat with our next guest author. Hi there, welcome to another episode of Author Roundup. My name is Emma, and for today's episode, I will be chatting with self-published author Stephen K. Moore. Stephen is a speaker, author, military, and airline pilot whose passion is to activate the Lord's Church. He holds a master's degree in marriage and family therapy and helps people through counseling, coaching, and seminars. He is here to talk about his recently published book, First Person Messiah, Transform Your Life Through Amazing Encounters with Jesus. Hi, Stephen. How are you today? Hey, Emma. Doing great. Uh, How about yourself? Very good. Very good. Your book was recently released in August, correct, of this year? Yes, correct. Perfect. Can you tell us about your book a little bit? Sure. It is a just something of working with a lot of people, a lot of young people and uh, people, believers who want to uh, I always say, you know, they want to be in the Bible more. And I just realized that people today, we live in a very intense uh, media environment where things are just presented it to you right. uh, almost without effort. And I just thought back to the way that I learned how to read, which I, I've come to just call empathic reading, where I just I get deep into it and like time disappears. And so when I uh, when I read the Bible or just about any good book, I find myself my pulse elevates. I see the pictures. So this book was an attempt to make the Bible come alive for people to to help them learn to do the same thing that I learned to do when I grew up in a very boring time to grow up. Mm -hmm. Right. Did you have a certain age range in mind? You talked about the younger generation. So was there like an age range you had in mind or is it for everyone or? I would say uh, there's a few sensitive topics in there as far as just adult issues. I would say a mature teenager would thoroughly enjoy it all the way up to uh, however old, however old you can be. So it's yeah. uh, you know, 17, 18 on up. Okay. It's, uh, it's about anybody. How long did it take you to write your book? Write this about, book? Six, about six weeks. Really? Really? That's yes. fast. <laughs> the, the thing is, this was such an enjoyable and passionate process. These stories that I've been reading my entire life, I just, uh, it was just using my imagination and some of the knowledge that I had of their cultures and the challenges they face. It just, I would sit down uh, usually in a restaurant or a coffee shop and I would just crank out a story because it just, I could see it in my head. Very cool. What inspired the story? You said that you grew up reading the Bible and you have that sort of background. What initially inspired it or there's multiple things that inspired it and inspired you to publish? Right. Well, well, one of the big events that I do talk about in the book is that I was starting a new class at church that was called Seeing Jesus Walking With. And I had prepared this lesson to try to tell people just the importance of really going deep into the Word and focusing. And uh, I, I woke up the morning of that class very early, and I just had this idea of presenting it from a first-person perspective using the story of the Samaritan woman at the well. And so I had about two hours and I just cranked it out as fast as I could using the Bible story, but just just totally going from her perspective as she walked to the well and she gets over the hill and she sees a guy sitting there. And the next thing she knows, she gets closer and it's a Jewish man. Mm -hmm. And it just, uh, it kind of flowed from there because I went into class. This was very different from anything I'd ever presented before, but you know, when you get in front of people and, and talk for seminars or classes, you can tell when you're connecting. And I could just see people were just locked on. The, the story was resonating with them. Mm -hmm. And it was, uh, there were tears and lots of great comments afterwards. Mm -hmm. So it just, I, at that moment, I had a friend in the class who's also a good writer. And he said, hey, let's do this book together. So okay. I uh, started writing it and then he just got too busy. So he was okay. kind of like, hey, you're on your own. So uh, you're on your own, <laughs> I finished your the life. book. Yes, exactly. Okay. And had you um, had any writing experience prior to publishing this book? 
I've Did got you always enjoy of, writing or was it just the passion uh, of this that was so easy to write? I think it's because, uh, once again, I did grow up in a time when uh, boredom was much easier to find and the, the library and books were so such a big part of my life. I always mm-hmm. admired and wanted to be a writer. And then I've written two other books prior to this. One was in, released in 2019 and one was released just earlier this year so. Uh, oh, it's wow. just something uh, I enjoy. Are those other two books, are those on the same subjects or are those a little different? Or They're uh, a little different. Uh, Satan's Wager, What the Devil and Job Got Wrong About God is, is just a story, uh, taking down the story of Job and all that he went through. Because uh, being a therapist, I find that I use the story of Job in almost every uh, kind of situation I even talk about. And uh, mm-hmm. even just very casually talking to people at work just so often I'll bring up Job. So it just takes apart a lot of the lessons about Job and how so often we'll say, Hey, I'm no Job. And I say, well, actually, if you read it really carefully, you probably are, (laughs) you know, know, if you, if you get angry at God and start kind of saying, why is this happening? That's, that's what he did too. And and God is Mm -hmm. great and merciful. And then the, the, the book that was released earlier this year um, in May is called Superhero, Being Who God Says You Are. And it's just a uh, talking with a lot of believers. They know that there's more out there in their faith that they could be living and experiencing and seeing Jesus work in their life. But there's something holding them back. Mm-hmm. And this is about the things that hold us back and get past them. And it kind of grew out of my uh, experience of giving therapy to people of just seeing what kind of things people were struggling with so this just takes a biblical look at the obstructions that can keep us from experiencing the the power of god in our lives so just about your professional work i'm curious how long have you been a marriage and family therapist for it's interesting it started probably about 10 or 12 years ago just because the therapist at our church family was overbooked and had a waiting list and i was running the marriage ministry so the guy in charge of it just said hey could you just see people to to kind of stabilize them until the the real guy can see them i wasn't the Mm -hmm. real guy and then (laughs) uh this and then it just kept coming so i uh, decided to enroll in a marriage and family therapy master's degree program and and did that finished that 2018 so i haven't really been doing that long and uh it's one of those things where I don't charge for it. It's just something I do for people who need help in my community, but I, uh, oh, wow. I do enjoy it. That's amazing. That's awesome. So do you think that and writing a book, do you think being a therapist kind of helps you write this book as well and vice versa? A- absolutely. And it also it kind of goes back to uh, when I was a teenager, I was a very awkward and shy person and I I, I was also very lonely as a result. I wasn't good at starting conversations. So I started mm-hmm. studying how to start conversations. And, and one of the big things that I learned was that if you ask people about them, that they will talk and they'll consider you be a good conversationalist. Mm-hmm. So at first it was just a technique maybe to get some friends. And then I discovered as I did this and as I listened to people, I was just fascinated by people because everybody has a story. And it, yeah. um, if you just care to listen and think about it, and this kind of goes into the, the writing of First Person Messiah, too, is that when I, when I read, for instance, the story of Nicodemus, and, and he's in the book, is that why did this one guy in particular, who was in a group of people who were considering Jesus to be a fraud, why did he slow down and say, I think this is the Messiah? It's mm-hmm. just kind of trying to think of... Um, what happens in people's lives that makes them open to new ideas or to listen better? Yeah, absolutely. What was your writing experience like? You said you mentioned that you went to a lot of coffee shops and public places, which is a little different from some writers. They like to be secluded and like in their house. What was your experience like? And maybe when did you get inspiration? Well, this is kind of funny. I am an airline pilot for a cargo airline. So I get to spend a lot of time. I get paid to spend time in hotels and eat in restaurants and go to coffee shops while I'm getting rest for the next flight. Right. And it uh, is to me, I'm kind of getting paid to write and it's kind of enjoyable. Yeah. But also, just like I talk about reading, when you go deeply into reading, the, the world kind of disappears and time has no meaning. When I'm writing, I can be in a noisy restaurant and all I am experiencing is that story in my head and the, and the thoughts and typing them out. So it's just uh, right. it seems unusual that I can uh, 
sometimes when I do slow down and listen, it's like, wow, this is a noisy place, but yeah, I wasn't hearing it. You're just like so. in the zone. You're just like, exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yes. How many pages, how much could you write at one time? Like what was the average about how long you could crank out something? Cause you finished in six weeks. That's very impressive. Right. I probably in a typical meal or coffee event, I might crank out 20 or 25 pages wow. on, on first person Messiah, but that's kind of a, because it flows along with a biblical right. story. Yeah. Uh, when I was writing the, the other book, Superhero, it took me a year and a half because there was okay. so much uh, research and thinking through, am I really saying what is true? Is this, is, am I making the right connection? So mm-hmm. it just depends on the kind of book. I don't always write that fast. Right. What was your favorite part about writing First Person Messiah? Or was there a section that you was really like near and dear to your heart? I think one of the big ones was in the story I write about Thomas, who we sometimes call Doubting Thomas, was putting myself kind of in his shoes in, in this moment, which I've read it all my life, but mm-hmm. Thomas and all the people who followed him, all the men and women who followed Jesus at some point met him and he said, follow me. And they start walking with him. Some people left their professions, maybe left their homes for a while. And then there comes this day where he says, I'm leaving and you can't come with me. And it just really struck me how hard that would have been to hear. I mean, I've been reading my whole life, and I never thought about how that would have just been crushing. What do you mean we can't go with you? This is you're our life now. Mm-hmm. And and then what follows just has so much more power when you think about where we are in following Christ now, mm-hmm. because we can't follow Him physically like they did either. But Jesus goes on to say, actually, this is better. When mm-hmm. I send the Holy Spirit, this is going to be good for you. So I think right. that's one of the, the parts of that process where I just picked Thomas because I'd never had really thought that deeply about him. But then when I got into the story, I was like, wow, there is such a, an encouraging lesson for me here. Yeah. But, uh, we, we have that advantage that Jesus said was for Thomas and all the disciples that he would go away. So you recently published it in August, but have you gotten any feedback or reviews or anything that you've really appreciated or have you spoken with people that certain aspects of your book have they've resonated with i think uh initially that the group of people who knew about it the most and started getting the books were people in my community so i did get a lot of Mm -hmm. feedback and that's great it was interesting that every person like there was an older gentleman there who's an elder in a church who said uh, the story of Simeon which is the very first story that I deal with this older guy who was told he wouldn't die before he saw the Messiah arrive he said he really identified with Simeon being older and everything hurting and (laughs) being ready to go home some of the women really identified with uh, Mary who uh, Mary and Martha the one who wanted to listen to Jesus rather than serve food and just kind of going yeah sometimes we our expected roles as uh, mm-hmm. men or women aren't necessarily what we want to do. So yes, I have heard back some very specific feedback. Yeah. Just because of the community they'll live in. How does that make you feel that your book has resonated with your community and, and people? Oh, I, I love it because one of the, the, just the realities of publishing these days, when I was writing my first book, my wife asked me, she said, what is your goal? And I said, and, and there's, a, there's a character in the story of Job called Elihu. I said, I just want to be Elihu for a few people. And that is be mm-hmm. someone who proclaims the glory of God. I heard that there's over a half a million books being published a year in the United States. So your chances of, of being a New York Times bestseller are very slim. But if you can help just a few people through right. what, God, what God has taught me, I'm thrilled. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah. Uh, it's a great process. I guess going back to your writing experience, was there anything difficult that you found through writing or? I think for this book in particular, the one issue that I, that kept coming up is that uh, those of us who, who serve Jesus Christ do not want to change his word. And I'm kind of adding mm-hmm. to some of the story using my imagination. And I was always going, okay, am I, am I misrepresenting him? That's the one thing I didn't want to do. Um, yeah. I didn't, okay. want, I didn't want someone to read this and say, oh, this, this is true of Jesus if it was actually just my imagination. So I, I was always mm-hmm. kind of going back and saying, what am I saying about Jesus in particular? Mm-hmm. Uh, this may flow real well, but is it 
does is reflective of truth. So I do put kind of a disclaimer in the front because that always go back to the original text and see what the yeah. story really does say. That was the challenging part for this book. I like the way it's from a new perspective, though, and I think people like really appreciate new perspectives. And one of the to that point, Emma, the uh, one of my heroes in the Bible is Mary, the mother of Jesus. But you know, they I guess. Writing was more difficult back then. It was all by hand, copied by hand. And there's so much more I would like to just sit down and listen to her talk about, such as, you know, how did she tell her parents this? How, what was their response? Yeah. Is, what was she thinking as she went through all this process of watching him grow? But this, it's not there. So mm -hmm. it, uh, to me, it's just there's so much value in just thinking about what, what it could have been like for her because she's yeah. just such an amazing person to just say, let it be to me as you've spoken. Mm -hmm. uh, there's so much more of the story there that I want to hear. So yeah, try to fill in a little bit of that. What advice would you give to someone that is wanting to pursue writing or is wanting to share a story or just give a different perspective to something that already exists and just a fresh mind? Oh, wow. I, I think each of us has a unique walk on this earth and a walk with God. And that is try to be who it is that God made you to be. Uh, mm -hmm. Don't try to write like someone else. Each one of right. us has uh, something very unique in our perspective to share. So it, I think quite often it's, it's in our uniqueness that we may find that that really resonates with people. So mm -hmm. uh, I had a friend years ago who he would love how someone spoke. So he would try to speak like them. And finally one day I said, Mark, just be Mark. I mean, I love Mark. Be yourself. You know? Yeah. <laughs> So yeah. kind of be yourself and uh, share yeah. from where you come, where from where you've learned. Okay. Yeah, I like that. I like be yourself can translate to kind of like write what you know, yeah. too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Do you have any personal or professional goals for the rest of this year? You said that you publish um, a book in March this year, right? Another another book? Yes. Yes. It did one in May was a superhero, May. and then this one that uh, came out shortly after that. Yeah. Moving forward, one of my big passions that goes along with this reading issue is that I'm I'm starting some seminars or classes to travel around to help people. I think one of the biggest reasons we don't read deeply in the Bible or good literature is because of devices. Uh, they're so distracting and they're so yeah. encompassing. So. Uh, helping people to get control of devices. Um, and, and they're, they're here to stay, but we need to know how to make them our servants instead of us serving them. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I'm working on those seminars, but also producing a book concurrently with it for people who just want to buy the book and have a oh, cool. way to step through all those addictive things in life. Okay. So for the seminars, is that like locally in your, your hometown and through your church? We're starting the, the, pilot program later this month we're doing the first one and we hope to export it all over the place to include oh, cool. just invite people in who can who have a passion for the same thing and train them to do it wherever they live so hopefully this will want to help a lot of people if we can yeah, yeah that's awesome you said that you're a pilot too do you yes. still do that yes okay. uh, i still fly for a, a large cargo operator and i have my own personal plane that i travel around in to, to speak to churches and groups. Oh. I started that when I was 15. I haven't broken that habit yet. I really enjoy it. <laughs> 15. Wow. Yes. That's awesome. <laughs> That's very cool. Let me ask you about Westbow Press. Your book, First Person Messiah, is self-published through Westbow Press. How did you discover us? First, it was an internet search. And okay. uh, I thought for the first book that I published, but then I was new to it and I went with a lower cost publisher <laughs> and uh, it was okay. And yeah. then uh, later on, Westbow contacted me and they said, what would it take for you to publish with us? They got me on board and I started working with them. So this is a whole different way of publishing. They've got so many people who can help you in such good programs, whatever level you want to promote your book, they've got it. How is your experience with like editing and the design? The editing was, was great. And the communication with the editor, when he was done, he sent me a fantastic letter just talking about what the book meant to him. And then the design mm -hmm. team, well, they, they sent me the proofs for the design, not just to the cover, but even the interior. I'm like, going, I never would have thought of that that they just did such a great job and it takes uh, and also tell back to the editing thing uh, 
the first book I tried to self edit and I, I learned that it's hard to see your right. own error. You yeah. Get to your <laughs> Definitely. So the, edit, the editing is a little bit of an extra expense, but it's worth it. Editing, I would say is probably the most stressful part of, of publishing. Yes, exactly. Be, yeah. I would have an error and my, my brain would make it make sense to me until someone yeah. else pointed it out. And I'm going, Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. You are right. <laughs> well, that's great. I'm so happy that you had a good experience with Westville Press. Is there anything else that you would like to mention today? Do you have a personal website or any socials you want to mention so folks can find you? I've got uh, for First Person Messiah and just just kind of getting this rolling. The Westbo just turned it over to me recently, but it's stevekmore.com. Uh, well, thank you so much, Stephen, for joining us today and talking about your book. And thank you out there for watching. You can purchase First Person Messiah at westbowpress.com on our online bookstore. You can purchase through Amazon and Barnes & Noble. And we will see you next time. Bye.